Singapore is a small island smack right in the middle of Southeast Asia and it is filled with treasures. What treasures, you ask? Well, let me show you. I am Baigul MJ. We're in Pasir Ris Park and let's find some animals. Look around us. This place looks just like any other regular park, right? However, if you explore deeper and keep your eyes peeled, you'll find many treasures of nature hidden right before us. This park is also nicknamed the best kept secret of Eastern Singapore because the number of animals you can find here is incredible! Being a park, you imagine you can only find common birds like the miner over there or the starlings over there, right? Wrong! This park is also home to many other much rarer animals and I am determined to find them today! Can you guys hear that? That is the sound of the cicadas buzzing! Cicadas are insects that can camouflage against the bark of the tree and they often make this noise. And you might not see them, but you can often hear them. Come over here! Look! There's a plantain squirrel hanging upside down from a branch. Squirrels have very flexible ankles that let them hang upside down like this to eat and also allow them to climb trees in all sorts of ways. First stop, we are going to check out the kitchen garden. I expect to find many insects here, but who knows, maybe we'll find some rare animals as well. Insects are important because they do lots of helpful work in nature. First, they help plants grow by pollinating them. Bees and butterflies visit flowers and spread pollen, which helps the flowers become fruits. Second, insects are nature's clean-up crew. When plants and animals die, Insects like the ants and the beetles will feed on them and break them down into tiny pieces. Third, insects are food for many other animals. Many animals such as the birds, frogs and lizards love to eat insects. These animals need insects to survive and stay strong. However, not all insects are friends of the garden like the caterpillar over there which will eat up the leaves of the plant. So, what some gardeners do, instead of spraying insecticides, is to employ the agents of nature. Some plants, like the lemongrass and basil, give off a strong smell that will drive away insects, while predators, like the ladybugs, clear out all the irritating aphids and mealybugs that will harm the plants. Although we most likely won't find the bigger wildlife here, this is still a very important ecosystem for the garden birds and insects. There's a sunbird right there! Can you see it? Some birds have a long, sharp beak and a slim tongue to help them drink nectar from the flowers. They are also very small and light, so they can stand on thin stem and branches surrounding the flowers. Most species of some birds have very colourful males, but their female counterparts look significantly duller in colour, which makes the female birds quite difficult to identify. Another often overlooked garden bird is one of my favourite birds in Singapore. Foraging amongst the leaves or insects up there is the black or orio. Make a guess why it is my favourite. Here's a little hint. Yep, because my favourite colour is yellow! Behind the kitchen garden lies a tiny little pond filled with thriving wildlife. I see a familiar looking animal swimming in the water. Those are the red-eared sliders, but you may know them as terrapins. However, they are not supposed to be living here. Most are left by mean people who don't want to look after them anymore. Remember, animals have feelings, even terrapins, so look after your pets and give them a proper home. Some other animals we can find in ponds like these are frogs and dragonflies. These animals are very important because they help keep pests like mosquitoes in check. Frogs are amazing pest control agents. When they are young, they live as tadpoles and they can eat mosquito larvae. And when they grow up, they can eat anything from mosquitoes to flies to even slugs. Dragonflies are even more amazing. Not only are their young, incredible hunters in the pond, adult dragonflies develop the ability to fly at over 55 km per hour and amazing eyesight to catch their prey in mid-air. That's the speed of a moving car! Moving on beyond the gardens, we are going to enter this part of the park which is covered in tall canopy trees where many other wildlife roam. We barely even started and I already spotted some chickens around me. 
those chickens are known as red jungle fowls. Although we usually think of them as farm animals, red jungle fowls are actually native to Singapore. This is a special spider web made by the tent spider. They build this type of three-dimensional webs to catch any falling prey from the leaves above. Look! A horse! Horses are not wildlife. They are considered domesticated animals and have been helping people for thousands of years. Since they are not wildlife, they are not our treasure today, so we are going to ride past them. Get it? Get it? This area of the park is where we can find our next wildlife treasure, which is a predatory animal. Shh! Let's be very quiet now because we're looking for the magnificent Crested Gold Shop. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look, it's over there! The Crested Gold Shop is a raptor. Not the dinosaur velociraptor, but these raptors are equally cool. They have sharp claws called talons and strong curved beaks that help them hunt their prey. Raptors are really important to the environment because they are at the top of the food chain. This means that they play a crucial role in maintaining the health of their natural environment by removing old, sick and weak animals from the prey population, therefore keeping their numbers under control. Under the crested gold shock that we are looking at right now is its very own nest. Gold shocks and many other raptors rear their chicks in nests like this. Oh look, that is a juvenile crested gold shock. You can tell it's a juvenile because it still has a lot of baby feathers. Now that you have a taste of the treasure hunt, let's look for another rare treasure here at Pasir Ris Park. For that, we will have to move closer to the shore. Let's go! Oh, hi! It's, it's outside here, it's outside here. Right outside here, it's on there. That right there is a female scarlet back flower pecker. Like the sunbirds, the male flower peckers are a lot more colourful. I think I saw some head bobbing up and down the water. It should be otters. I saw him! It's a pair of otter! Pasir Ris Park is located near the beach, so many of the animals here depend on the sea for food. Those little birds flying around right now are the little terns. These little daredevils fly above the shallow areas of the sea, spotting for little fishes, and when they finally aim on one, If we look slightly further and higher up, we will see the second treasure that we are finding. The white-bellied sea eagle! This is the dragonfly that somehow landed on my finger. And that's not very surprising because they will always find a tall structure to perch on, especially during the day. But you're not a tall structure. My finger is... The white-bellied sea eagle! They use a similar set of techniques as the little turns, but on a way bigger scale. The sea eagles soar high up above the sky and with their keen eyesight, they can spot prey from a distance away. Instead of dive bombing like the terns, the eagles swoop in and grab them out of the water with their sharp talons instead. Okay, we have one last treasure to show you. Let's head back into the park. Oh, got a lot of chicken, oh my gosh. It's a chicken day, chicken day. Oh, yes, good morning to you too. Hello! Good morning! The last treasure of Pasir Ris Park that we are finding today is another bird of prey and they lie just right ahead. Look! Those are the spotted wood owls. They have long been spotted to start their family in this part of the park. Unlike most other raptors, owls hunt at night. They use their sensitive hearings and those gigantic eyes to find their prey in the dark. In the day, you'll see them just chilling and relaxing on trees like this instead. Getting enough rest is very important for the owls. Pasir Ris Park is an area filled with wildlife. It is a place where many Singaporeans, especially those living around here, are very proud of. It is incredible not only because of the number of wildlife we can find here, but also how close the wildlife is to us while still thriving. And this truly amazes me. Well kids, as our exciting journey comes to an end, let's take a moment to cherish the precious treasures we've discovered today. Our incredible wildlife! 
From the more commonly seen animals living in the gardens to the fierce hunters of the sky, from the majestic raptors to the cute owls, each of these treasures from Mother Nature herself plays an important role in the world. Together, they form a colourful world that would otherwise be pretty boring. Remember to do our part and take care of nature so we can continue to enjoy all these treasures around us. That is all for today's episode of Wildlife Treasure Hunt. Join me next time for more!